Hi, welcome to this video. In today's video, I'm going to look at a very interesting problem of China Olympiad, but I'm not sure which year this problem, okay? So suppose n as a natural number, x sub 0 equal to 0, we have x i superior, we have x sub i strictly superior than 0, we have the index i, it goes from, it goes from 1 through n, we have a sum of this x sub i as i goes from 1 to the n equal to 1, okay? The question we are going to prove this big sum of the x sub i over this product of the two sums, okay? Between 1 and pi over 2, okay? Which is superior or equal to 1 and strictly inferior than pi over 2. Before we start proving this, this question, I'm going to prove these two identities. I'm going to use them as a tool, which are for all real numbers x strictly superior than zero. We have sine of x strictly inferior than x. The second one, we have sine of theta sub i minus sine of theta sub i minus one strictly inferior than cosine theta sub i minus one multiplied by sub theta multiply by theta sub i minus theta sub i minus 1, okay? Go ahead, pause this video, and give the try to this problem. When you worry, come back to see the full solution, okay? Let's get, in, let's get into the solution now. f of x equal to sine x, okay? For all x is a real number from 0 to plus infinity, okay? By mean value theorem and value theorem there is sum c from 0 to x from 0 to infinity okay such as we have f of x minus f of f of 0 over x minus 0 equal to f prime of c, okay? This is the mean value theorem. So now we have f prime of x equal to cosine x as we derivate this one. So now let's put, so let's mean f of c equal to cosine c. Let's mean f of x, which is sine x minus 0 over x equal to cosine c. Cosine c, as you know, strictly inferior than 1, okay? Because we, because c is a, is a real number between 0 and x, because, because c is strictly inferior than 0, okay? That's why we don't have, we don't take the number zero here. That's why we have cosine c strictly inferior than one, okay? So now, implies sine x inferior than x, okay? So we have the sine x inferior, strictly inferior than x for all x superior, strictly inferior, superior than zero, okay? Now we prove the first identity. Now let's move on to prove the second identity, okay? Before mo we move to our uh, problem, okay? So we have sine of theta sub i minus sine of s s sine of theta sub i minus one. As we know, we have the, this trigonometry identity, sine theta minus sine phi equal 2 times cosine theta plus 5 over 2 multiplied by sine of theta minus 5 over 2, okay? We are going to apply this one, okay? By a uh, I'm going to apply this identity here, okay? So now, we have this one is 2 times cosine theta sub i plus theta sub i minus 1 over 2 multiply by sine theta sub i minus theta sub i minus 1 over 2, okay? We have it as a tool. 
we have this one so now I'm going to show this one is less than this one okay so as you know we already proved the first identity which is sine x is strictly inferior than x I'm going to apply this one here this one I'm going to this one put it here so as you see here since we have this information by the trigonometry proof okay so now I'm going to uh, use the first identity in order to prove this one okay so the first identity we have the sign for all x strictly superior than zero we have the sign of x strictly inferior than x so let's mean here let's mean sine as we have the theta strictly superior than uh, zero okay since we have the theta strictly superior than zero okay we have the the sine of theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one over two is inferior is strictly inferior than theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one okay over two okay but we have this all this term so that's mean implies two cosine theta sub i plus theta sub i minus one over two okay multiply by this one by the sine theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one over two okay strictly inferior than uh, two times cosine theta sub i plus theta sub i minus one over two multiply by theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one okay over two okay now I'm going to simplify two by two. So I will have I will have this one, the original one, which is sine theta sub i minus sine theta sub i minus one, strictly inferior than cosine theta sub i plus theta sub i minus one over two. Multiply by theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one okay i'm going to prove this one is less than theta sub, theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one okay so let's check it with this one now so we have cosine theta sub i plus theta sub i minus one over two less than cosine theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one okay this one if you take a look at here we are going to prove this one between one and pi over two what do you, what do you know about the cosine between zero and pi over two is a increase is decreasing function right so since this is decreasing function when we take off cosine from the both sides this inequality changed the change the direction this inequality will be flipped so as you know since we do the so that's mean what so we have the theta between 0 and pi over 2 because we are proving this term between 1 and pi over 2 that's mean theta is always between theta is between 0 and pi over 2 that's mean a cosine theta is decreasing function since we know the cosine is decreasing function between 0 pi over 2 so when we take off the cosine from both sides the inequality will be changed the direction over 2 okay cosine theta is decreasing function is decreasing okay so that's mean we when we take off the cosine from both sides this inequality switch the direction so that's mean theta sub i plus theta sub i minus one over two becomes superior or equal uh, strictly superior than theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one okay 
So the, that's me. I'm going to tick this one to the other side. I will have. So since we have theta sub i plus theta sub i minus one over two, superior should be superior than theta sub i minus theta sub i minus one. Theta sub i superior than theta sub i minus one. Okay. So we proved this one now. Theta minus sine of theta sub i minus one is strictly inferior than cosine theta. Now we have this sum. We have the sum of x sub i as i goes from 1 to the n, which is x1 plus x2 all the way down to the xn equal to 1, right? As the given information. If you take a look at this sum, we have we have this sum, we have the sum of x sub i uh, as i goes from 1 to the n equal to x1 plus x2 all the way down to the xn equal to 1, right? If you take a look at the first square root, you will see the terms x1 through the x sub i minus 1, okay? When you go to the next square root, you will see the continuation of these terms right after x, x sub i minus 1 as a last term in the first square root we, are, we have the the first term in the second square root which is a, x sub i which is the term after x i, I minus one. since we have so that's mean we have the half of this term is included in the first square root okay another half of these terms is included is located in the second square root okay what does it mean this way is inferior or equal to 1 over 2 because we took just half of these terms as you see it here okay because we took that's mean this this term is x1 through the x sub i minus 1 inferior or equal to 1 over 2 same thing with the second square root so that's mean that this term is inferior or equal to 1 over 2 as well okay so what does it mean x sub i all the way down to the x sub n is inferior or equal to 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 which is 1 over 4 right because we multi multiply something smaller than uh, 1 we'll always give you something more than smaller than the original one x1 and all the way down to the x sub i minus 1 multiplied by this term which is inferior or equal to 1 over 2 all the way down to the x sub n is inferior than 1 over 4 than 1 plus x sub 0 and all the way down plus x sub 1 plus all the way down to the x sub n okay what does it mean i just applied the regular product which is 1 is inferior or equal to 1 over 4 I'm just I'm adding the 1 plus x0, x0 equal to 0, okay, because that's what we have in, in the first information, as, as, a, as a given information, okay, this one, square root of 1 over 4, which is 1 over 2, square root of this one, this one, 1 plus x0 is 0, 1 plus 1. Because this one I'm putting in here, I'm putting this one, which is number one. It, gi it gives you one, okay? So what does this mean? This one, one is inferior or equal to one because we have one plus something. So it's always bigger than or equal to one. So as you see here, this number which we proved is inferior or equal to one. So since we have the denominator is inferior or equal to one, that means this number, which is uh, sum of x, which is number x sub i over this number, is superior or equal to 1, okay? So, thus, sub n is superior or equal to 1, as i goes from 1 to the n, okay? Because denominator is inferior or equal to 1. That's the reason this y, y is bigger. Now we proved this side. Let's move on to the next one, okay? So let's set, set cosine of theta sub i minus 1 equal to this product sum of set also onto the x sub 
i minus 1 plus x sub i. Okay? So now, implies sine of theta sub i equal to x1 plus x2 and all the way down to the x sub i minus 1 plus x sub i. Okay? As you know, as you know here, as you know here, I'm going to replace this one by cosine by sine theta sub uh, theta sub. Uh, I'm going to replace these terms for x1 through x sub i minus one by sine theta sub i minus one. Okay, so now I will have sine of theta sub i equal to sine of theta sub i minus one because the sine of theta sub i equal to to this one, so that's mean this one. So we have one one term less, so that's mean we have sine theta sub i minus one plus x sub i. This one is implies equivalent. This one equivalent x sub i equal to sine of theta sub i minus sine of theta sub i minus one. Okay. Now I have this one. Now I'm going to evaluate the this sum now okay so the sum of x sub i over this product is this one which will have the cosine of theta sub i minus one as i goes from one to the end okay we already we already prove this one x sub i is this one which is which is sum of sine of theta sub i minus sine of theta sub i minus 1 over cosine theta sub i minus 1 okay <coughs> as i goes from 1 to the end so the sum of x sub i over cosine sub cosine of the theta sub i minus 1 as the i goes from 1 to the end as you see here this one we already prove it we prove this one is less than this one okay so this mean this sum is this this sum this one is less than as you see is that less than cosine the sum of Cosine theta sub i minus 1, theta multiplied by theta sub i minus theta sub i minus 1 over cosine theta sub i minus 1. I, I, I as i goes from 1 to the end. Okay? Now I'm going to cancel out cosine by cosine. So this one will be, it will be less than sum of cosine theta sub i minus 1 multiplied by theta sub i minus theta sub i minus 1 over cosine theta sub i minus 1 i goes from 1 to the n now i'm going to cancel uh, i'm going to simplify cosine theta sub i minus 1 by cosine theta sub i minus 1 okay so i will have i will have now i will have this one the sum of theta sub i minus theta sub i minus 1, okay, as i goes from 1 to the end, okay, now I get here, uh, now I'm going to clean up the board and bring this one at the top and continue with our problem. So I equal to theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2 plus theta sub 3 and all the way down to the theta sub n right minus theta sub 1 plus theta sub 2 and all the way down to this theta sub n minus 1 here we can write it theta sub n minus 1 plus theta sub n okay now this one will be cancelled out with this one so i will have i will have equal to the theta sub n okay Theta sub n, I can rewrite it also minus theta sub 0 because equal to this one. So it's arc sine x 0, arc 0 equal to 0, which is arc sine 
0 equal to 0. So that's mean theta minus theta. So as, as we have the theta between 0 and pi over 2, so that's mean pi over 2. Okay? 1 is inferior, is inferior or equal to the xi over the product. Now we have done with this problem. Thank you for watching. I will see you in next video. Bye.